In a moment to introduce our speaker will be uh, club member Stephen Morse with the classification of insurance. Stephen told me that he has wanted to be a Rotarian for years. He only waited until he had some autonomy in his business and could take the time to contribute. As to what inspires Stephen about Rotary, he's observed the warm welcomes of our experienced club members to uh, Rotary. He's seen it expressed personally and he looks forward to serving on the UW Business Mentors Committee that works with the Foster School of Business. Now, during the main program, our Zoom participants are encouraged to submit your questions in the Zoom chat feature. Our club sergeant at arms, Ken Grant, with a classification marketing, will select from those questions and pose them to our speaker during Q&A. Additionally, our club member, Jan Levy, with classification leadership development, will serve as our roving mic handler here in the Weston Ballroom. And now, Stephen Morse. Thank you, President Jimmy, and good afternoon, Rotarians. I would like to uh, make a quick announcement that Tremaine is our guest speaker tonight, and he is joining us virtually, so he is gonna zoom into us tonight. Uh, small health uh, situation last night has has changed the plans, but we're prepared and adapted and uh, looking forward to a great program. So without further ado, Tremaine Holloway grew up in North Carolina. He earned his master's at Harvard in school leadership and education. Then he moved across the country to join us here in Seattle to, in his words, follow his curiosity. If that's not the soul of an explorer, then I don't know what is. Many of you know, before Seattle became a leader in the tech industry, with Microsoft, Amazon, and others. We were an industrial town with Packard, Boeing, Weyerhaeuser, and others. And we were a city, a region, built on the maritime industry. The maritime industry has been facing some serious challenges over the last few years, among them an aging workforce and an homogenous population. Fortunately, key stakeholders in the region, including the Northwest Maritime Center, the Port of Seattle, the Duwamish Coalition for Cleanup, and other leaders in the region have joined together and have created a high school that is using project-based learning to prepare students for the maritime industry through hands-on experience. Tremaine is the founding principal of this high school and is leading the way to the future of this industry in our region. Thank you for joining us today, Tremaine, and welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All right, I want to make sure that I'm on here. Before we begin, I'll share my screen. All All right, well, hello everyone. Thank you, thank you for that wonderful introduction first and foremost, and thank you for uh, just being accommodating and, uh, and being flexible in, this, in, the, in these uh, unprecedented times is what folks say nowadays, right? Uh, we have to be adaptable and flexible. So thank you so much for allowing me to uh, join you here today um, virtually. I'm um, gr grateful to be here, grateful for the opportunity to share more about Maritime High School. And uh, I'm really thrilled and excited to just get to hear from you all a little bit later on today as well. Uh, but before I begin, like I said, my name is Tremaine Holloway. I have the privilege and honor of serving as founding principal for Maritime High School. Um, it is a dream job, I will say, um, being able to create and build something from scratch and really tap into the entrepreneurship skills. Um, that I've always wanted to, to dive into. Uh, but before I begin today, I, I wanted us to, I wanted to interact with you. And normally if I was in a room, this would be easier, right? I could just easily come up to you, have a conversation, uh, be able to ask questions and things of that nature. So it might be a little bit challenging today, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. And I know we have a couple of people who are also Zooming as well. So you're gonna get a chance also, folks, my Zoom family, you're gonna get a chance to interact as well today. So 
Uh, there's a, a, a tribe in Africa of, of warriors uh, by the name of Maasai. And uh, these, these, large, uh, these large men um, in, in this tribe actually, uh, they, the way they greet each other is so fascinating to me. Um, the way they greet each other is they use a traditional greeting and I don't know how to say the exact phrase, but it translates over into uh, how are the children? Uh, how are the children? And so when I hear that, uh, that's kind of how I want to start off today. I like to go a little bit further than that, though, rather than saying, how are the children? Because um, we are here to talk about students, about children today. But I want to go a little bit further. Um, and I want to challenge you to uh, you know, speak with your neighbor, the person that's next to you, the left or the right of you. I'll give you, for those who are in the room, maybe look left or right to you, talk to that person who is there um, and go a little bit further than that and really ask them, um, who or what do the children need is the question I want you to ask them. So again, who or what do the children need? And for my folks who are on the Zoom, you can probably put that in the chat. Who or what do the children need? So let's take about one minute to just ask that question and see what response you get from your person sitting next to you. Good, good. I'm seeing some answers flowing in the chat. I'll read those out. A great future, absolutely. Encouragement. Opportunity. Time and attention. Mentorship. Good role models. Coaches. Belief in them. I love that. Confidence. Hope for solutions. Equity, absolutely, being listened to. This is great, this is great. Opportunity to fail safely, that's a good one. I might have to keep that one. Good ancestors, respect. Grace, patience, guidance, leadership. Constructive challenges, absolutely. Community. Awesome, awesome. Well, I hope everyone had an opportunity to share theirs in the room. I gotta be honest with you. I love what I'm seeing from my Zoom family here because we're they're filling up the chat with a lot of things here. A voice to be heard. A voice to be heard, absolutely. I hope those conversations are going well inside there at the West End. Great. Great, great. So obviously great responses. There's no wrong answer, but that, there was an answer that I'm actually looking for. Um, and that answer, um, I want you to, for those who are in the room, I see some po folks who have somebody with them. Um, you know, I want you to look at that person that's next to you. Um, and I want you to repeat after me when I say this, because this is the true answer that I wanted you to hear, okay? On the count of three, we're gonna say this, okay? One, two, three. Repeat after me, all of the children everywhere need you. Exactly. All of the children everywhere need you. That's the answer that I was looking for. All of the children everywhere need you. Yes, they need leadership. They need coaching. They need constructive challenges, but they really need you. And so as we go into the day and we talk about the school, as we talk about Maritime High School, our students, they need you. They need the expertise that sits in the room there. They need the expertise that sits in this Zoom link here. They need the wisdom and the knowledge from us. And it takes each of us for all of our children to be successful. So I'm grateful to be amongst in the room with you today virtually. I'm grateful to just be here in your presence today because all of our children everywhere need you. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to see how you can support our children. So you're, 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 you're probably wondering uh, who or, uh, uh, or what Maritime High School really is all about. And so um, I've prepared 
uh, a couple of slides for you today, just for you to hear from uh, about Maritime High School. But obviously we started, so we launched. We, we, we began last year, September, 2021, was our first uh, grand opening that actually happened. So starting in September, wanting to you know be a school that is going to, just like what was said earlier, a project-based learning school, um, one gear towards getting kids out on the water. Now, I took this job on back in January of 2021. And everybody know what was happening in January 20, 2021 and what is still happening now, right? Uh, hence one of the reasons why we've I've pivoted to, to, to being virtual today and a lot of us have pivoted to being virtual. And so uh, when I took on this role in January, um, just thinking about, okay, how can we create a school that's gonna be multicultural, multi-ethnic, multilingual, and essentially multi-generational where kids get to have hands-on experiences to be able to collaborate with one another and to have different types of experiences that are not necessarily just in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom, really getting out on the water. And so when I thought about that in January as taking this on, you know, I actually laughed. I laughed, <laughs> I laughed it off because I really didn't think eh, this is not going to happen. We're not going to be able to do this. And especially not within eight to nine months of trying to open a school in that same year. Um, but believe it or not, we've launched. We're doing it. In the midst of a pandemic, we're doing it. And I think one of the reasons why we're doing it is because we have some great folks connected to MHS. We have a great team of players who are really invested in Maritime High School and want it to be successful. And I know a lot of you who are in the room and are on the Zoom here today are looking for something positive, right? Looking for something that's gonna give you a beacon of light or a beacon of hope. And I think MHS, Maritime High School, um, was that for people. And so that really helped galvanize the community. That really helped us be able to, to launch our school. So again, um, having that positivity, having that influence within some of our community partners and some of the folks that are on the team today. We've been able to do that. Uh, we started with, uh, we, we had a goal of opening with about 40 ninth graders um, to commence on in September. We've been able to do that, get kids out on the water at least twice a week. We've been able to do that. And we are actually wrapping up our first semester here uh, next week. So uh, thrilled and excited about uh, seeing some of the amazing experiences and some of the projects that students have been working on. And, uh, and so in this photo here, you can see, you know, it's really all about hands-on, right? You see folks who are actually out on water. You see some of our kids in that top right corner here um, working in the shop. Uh, we have kids on the boat here who are learning how to tie knots and to do things on a vessel. So it's been amazing. It's been amazing. And, I, and it's been a great journey thus far. So I can talk a lot about how Maritime High School functions and how it works, but there's a video that I wanna make sure that everybody gets a chance to see because that video that we've created really uh, captures everything about Maritime High School and all that we are about. And so let's see, um, let's, let's try to capture this video here. So I think uh, the AV team is gonna queue up a video for you. So I'm gonna... Hopefully the video is starting to play. I can't actually see it, so. Thank you. 
amazing jobs in the maritime district, which you know, Northwest Maritime Center has a say that this is the most powerful future that we know. And so project-based learning for me is really grounded in that idea that we want our students to own their learning. I am all about hands-on, hearts-on, and minds-on education. I believe that we learn by doing. And so that experience where kids can actually get out into the field, where they're going to the Port of Seattle, where they're going to Northwest Maritime Center, where they're actually getting their hands on things and building and constructing things, that's where the real learning actually happens to me. If the, the young people that are part of these programs will get a chance to see the bounds of their opportunities are limitless. And, and I tell you, we will be able to cultivate so much new talent right here at home. Helping underrepresented neighborhoods like South Park, like Georgetown, having young people from those neighborhoods that are less supported and typically have less generational wealth to start getting some of these jobs, then they'll bring that wealth back into their neighborhoods. How the Maritime High School is focusing on BIPOC communities, I think that's really special um, to see these youth getting this knowledge coming into the space and then shaping the space. Because as we know, like the maritime industry is looking for bodies and they're also trying to cater to a new audience. I believe this high school is just gonna be a multiplier for the maritime industry. Uh, we have so many industry leaders around this area that can offer their history, their expertise to help our students you know, they get more familiar with what the industry does. Yeah, I'm really excited for them because the curriculum is not just about learning the science, but it's really about engaging in community and learning about environmental justice, being equitable, challenging the process even. And I think that's what the maritime industry really needs and the world needs. I chose Maritime High School because I wanted something different in my education. This school is giving me and my classmates a unique opportunity to learn in different ways. I chose this school because I really love marine biology and I also heard it was hands-on learning which can be really helpful for me because I remember things better when I actually do them. So rather than sitting down in a classroom and just like reading about boats, we're able to go out into the field and get that experience for it. At Maritime, you get lots and lots of field work. You get to go outside, you get to enjoy some fresh air, and you get to just meet new people and have new experiences that at other schools you just wouldn't have something like a community learning showcase where they're not only able to demonstrate that learning but they're able to share that with their community the community learns and hears about what's happening and there becomes that that generation of interest and momentum and change probably somebody that's going to change the world is going to come out of that maritime high school because they're going to think of a clever idea and it's going to help out future generations when students start to realize that they are active participants in their own learning um, that really can be transformational but I think right now what we have is a program that will inspire the, uh, the young people of our future. No matter what your path is, whether you like science or recreational boats or working with your hands and building boats or repairing boats or working on boats, there's a place for you. Awesome. I swear every time I watch, I watch that, that I just get even more inspired. So hopefully that video was able to resonate with you as well. So uh, let's get back to the, the program here. Let me share my screen again. All right. Hopefully folks can see that. Hopefully we're good to go. Let me get a thumbs up in my Zoom room if possible, just to make sure um, the folks are good. All right. Looks like we're good to go. All right, so I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, commence because it looks like I got some head, head nods and good. So, all right, so I'm not sure if you've been able to see this, but this report here was actually commissioned by uh, Port of Seattle, uh, a changing tide. And I won't go into too many details of what uh, specifics were involved in, in writing this or some of the data points that came out, but a lot of the stuff that really came out was talking about the maritime industry as a whole at the particular moment in time. So when I think about the maritime industry, and this really connects to my maritime why, um, at the moment in time, uh, there's, you know, there's, there's a phrase that folks use called a silver tsunami. 
right? Or there's there's this there's this mass exodus of folks retiring out of the maritime industry. And one of my inspirations for being a part of Maritime High School and just learning more about the maritime industry in itself, um, a, a, as you heard, there wasn't really a lot of, uh, of, of information given about my background or having a maritime background, and that's true. I don't necessarily have that expertise, um, but like I mentioned before, all the children everywhere need you because you have that expertise and you have that, that knowledge and that wisdom. And so I rely on that and we rely on others as well, partnerships that we have. Port of Seattle is one of those partners. And one of the things that came out of this that was really resonating for me is that uh, the maritime industry needs a transformation. Um, when I think about the maritime industry, there's tons and tons of opportunities uh, of, in different sectors in maritime. And there's a lot of diversity within the job opportunities that are available. But when it comes to the actual workforce, it is not as diverse. And so my, my goal and my, giant, my dream and really what captures out of this particular document is I want to be able to, to, to be that conduit to connect our students who need power to folks in the industry that have power so that the maritime industry can be powerful. And so that's what really Maritime High School is about. It's about closing that gap that exists to, to, in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And how do we take the maritime industry by storm and transform the maritime industry from that perspective. So if you haven't had an opportunity to check this out, check out this article, it's a great read, really good um, resources and data points in here. I would be remiss if I did not share with you the folks who are on the team that make Maritime High School work, that make Maritime High School uh, be a school that has come to fruition. And so uh, these folks here on the screen, uh, I'll start from left to right, top left corner, Highline Public Schools. We have a phenomenal leader by the name of Dr. Susan Enfield, who really is the person, uh, innovative and destructive innovator, who always challenges and bucks up against the system and the status quo, and wanted our students in our district to have choices, to have opportunities. How do we connect our students to their calling? And this is one of the ways that we were able to do that. Um, by having a dynamic leader in, in Highland Public Schools that took on this, this opportunity. Port of Seattle, and I have to give a shout out to Commissioner Ryan Calkins for his work, for his vision, for his wisdom and expertise. Um, if it wasn't for him, I don't think this would even be a thought, right? So to have someone like him um, in his position to be able to think, hey, how can we uh, invest in our future now by creating a school such as Maritime High School. And Port of Seattle has been a phenomenal partner uh, in terms of helping and support Maritime High School. The Wamish River Community Coalition, which was mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, just really just keeping the notion of how do we stay true and grounded to our roots. We have a strong affinity for the South Park area, for the Duwamish River, um, for Native heritage. And so DRCC really provides that structure, really provides and makes sure that we stay grounded in that foundational knowledge when it comes to our native heritage regarding the maritime industry. And last but definitely not least, Northwest Maritime Center is the, the folks that really allow us to have the blue in Maritime High School. They help us provide those maritime fieldwork experiences. So like I said earlier, the two week, two time, two days out of the week, some of the photos and, and some of the folks, folks you saw in the video, um, those are some maritime staff folks that were actually helping our students with their work, being able to get those hands-on, hearts-on, and minds-on type of experiences. So Jake Beatty uh, is, all, is an amazing executive director. And I think Steven is actually in there with you. So um, and we might have some time to have some Q&A, but Steven uh, is also is there to help support Maritime High School um, in terms of how, how we are, are, are blue to, or, or brings the blue to Maritime High School is what I would say. So great partnerships to have, like I mentioned before, it takes you and it takes a team. So I just wanna skim through these demographics real quick about Maritime High School. So obviously, you know, we are in Highland Public Schools. Our demographics, I won't list them all out, but essentially demographics in Highline Public Schools, uh, we're about 80% non-white. There's almost uh, 100 different primary languages actually spoken. I think, I always tell people that Highline Public Schools is probably the most beautiful, diverse district in the country. 
Um, you can go anywhere in the world by talking to each individual student because they come from so many different backgrounds. They speak so many different languages. Um, it's one of the most diverse districts in the country. Um, and so I will be honest and say that uh, in terms of our demographic at Maritime High School now, it isn't necessarily a reflection of what you see on the screen here. But our goal and our vision, obviously, being equity driven and also thinking about our future, wanting to be multicultural, wanting to be multi-ethnic and having that vision um, as the school grows in capacity from the 40 students we have now to the 400 at maximum capacity, we want to reflect these demographics. We wanna make sure that these demographics are uh, a reflection of Highline Public Schools within Maritime High School. So we're all about how do we uh, you know, in include diver diversity, equity, and inclusion and, and really get our students some of our underrepresented students to a place of calling, to a place of knowing where their potential could be within the maritime industry. So again, some of our guiding precepts and concepts here are just listed. Um, our vision really is being student-centered. So how do we get those students who are furthest away from the education system closer to it? We're all about doing that at Maritime High School. Equity-driven, so really wanting to make sure that we are having that representation um, our students of color representation, our students who may speak a language other than English represented, our students who are in the South Park area, in all areas in the region here in the greater Seattle area that might be underrepresented. And of course, maritime focus. It wouldn't be maritime high school without having the blue, without having those partners that I mentioned earlier. So to ensure that kids have that exploratory experience and learn about maritime construction, vessel operations and design marine research and resources. So those that's our pillars, that's our vision when it comes to Maritime High School. And of course, again, this is really what a day in the life is. So very similar to the video that I showed earlier, but these are our students here on, uh, in the middle, we have a couple of students in the classroom. We have an aquaponics lab also as well on campus on site. So you can see that down here. Um, Henry is, is doing a phenomenal job of working with the fishies that are there. And then these uh, very left and also far right, these are pictures of our students being on a vessel, Admiral Jack, which is actually provided by uh, Northwest Maritime Center. So again, having that mission and vision to be able to get kids out on water, to have those hands-on, hearts-on, and minds-on type of experiences, that's what we're all about at Maritime High School. So first question that I asked you in the beginning, who, or what do the students need? Obviously, that was you. That was the folks that are on the screen with me today. That are the folks who are in the room right now, um, right next to you. So how can you support? Or how can you support and help the children? So these are the areas where we are looking for support and we know that you can provide that expertise and that help for us. So curriculum support. Currently right now, uh, we have um, outside of uh, Northwest Maritime Center, we have a project design work group, which is essentially folks who are actually in the maritime industry right now, um, working with our teachers to help support curriculum, to build these pro projects, to focus on project-based learning, um, to really give that maritime lens. So this is about 20 to 30 folks, I believe, that are on the pro project design work group. They also serve in another capacity as well to be able to support um, mentor and internship. Um, in the future, which I'll talk about a little bit later there. So definitely in terms of curriculum support, we're looking for folks to be able to help support in that area. Obviously, we're a school and in order for us to provide the hands-on experiences to provide above what uh, traditional schools would be able to offer, there's some you know financial capital that comes with that as well. So thinking about some of the funding pieces, some of the philanthropic enterprise, how can we make connections with you and how can you make connections for us so we can be a school of valor. We can be a school that we aspire to be years and years from now. Um, recruiting students. We are currently in the process of taking um, applications. So if you all know of any seventh graders, any eighth graders, any middle school student that might have an interest in maritime, and even if they don't have an interest, if they, are, if they have an interest in a school that is geared towards being maritime focused, equity driven, and student centered, and really focused on project-based learning, the Maritime High School is the school for them. So let all your middle school folks that you know, 
uh, tell them about our school, tell them about this experience. We'd love to have them, we'd love to have them join us. And enrollment is happening right now for both ninth and 10th, or rising ninth and 10th graders, excuse me. Uh, and then last but not least, mentorship and internships. So we have an audacious goal of making sure that every kid has mentoring um, their sophomore year. Um, and mentoring is very important to me. And the reason why I say that is because I believe that mentorship is an education at the expense of someone else's tuition. And what I mean by that is you can have a conversation with a mentor that has had the skill, that has had the job that you want or the career that you want, and that can save you 30 years off of your life within that 30 minute conversation, just because you had that conversation with that person who's done that work before. So mentorship to me is very important. It truly is an education at the expense of someone else's tuition. And so we wanna be able to provide that for our students as well at Maritime High School. And then those mentorships will essentially turn into internship opportunities, their junior and senior year. So how do we connect the learning that kids are having in the classroom, in these fieldwork experiences to real life jobs, real life opportunity? I'm all about how do we close the racial wealth gap. And so if these internships are actually funded, if these internships are actually paid, that would be even better. Um, because our kids deserve to be able to be compensated for their work, but also have those learning experiences as well um, from those internship opportunities. So helping us make connections to the maritime community, the maritime industry, and think about it from a perspective of not only just you're investing in us, but how do we invest in you? These students are the future. They're the next generation. They're the students. They're the folks. Uh, they're the children that you are able to help and support. And so I'll close by saying, let's keep connected. I love the fact that uh, we all are here together today to not only um, you know, hear about Maritime High School, but to celebrate the future and the future of Maritime because it really does exist here at Maritime High School. I think that we have something good going for us, even in the midst of a pandemic. I'm really excited about the future. I'm excited about the journey of our students from nine through 12th grade and also their opportunities beyond high school in the maritime industry. So again, here's, our, here's my contact information as well as Jake Beatty. And Steven is also in the room. I think he's gonna probably field a couple of questions for you. Um, I will stay here uh, on the Zoom call just to listen in and to take any questions and concerns that you might have. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time and your flexibility. I'm excited uh, to continue to partner with you in the future. Thank you once again. It's on. <laughs> well, it, this is great. Um, I, I love your superintendent. She's done an extre extremely fine job, both with the Aviation High School and with now the Maritime High School. One of my questions has to do with um, how you are going to replicate the diversity that exists in Highline in your school. How are you going to go about doing that? Because right now you don't have that diversity that really is what your principle is all about. That's number one. And number two, have you thought about working with uh, Ballard High School in Seattle and their maritime uh, program so that you can do more of a region-wide um, program? Yes, thanks for the question. That, that first one is actually one that I have been addressing or trying to address uh, for the past couple of months. You know, it's always going to be a challenge when you're first, well, first, can, can folks hear me first? Okay, so make sure. Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, when we talk about or we think about uh, startups and when we think about things that are just beginning, um, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is essentially uh, middle-class families are the ones that really have the access, you know, and really are the ones that are gonna be the risk takers. And so we have to really deconstruct that normalized assumption that just because something is new doesn't mean it's not good for me or doesn't mean that I, I don't know anything about it and I shouldn't pursue that. And then oftentimes in our underrepresented community, in our communities of color specifically, because there's not that understanding of, of, of the future and there's that, uh, that, that thing that's holding you back because you, it's unknown, 
we got to be able to break that. So um, I think having the four partners and also having each and every one of you on the screen and here um, in, in, the, in the room with me right now, um, we need to get the word out. We need to get the word out to our communities that don't know much about maritime. Um, as you all know, the maritime industry in itself um, is, a, is an industry that definitely needs uh, a transformation in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so how do we connect our students to their calling? Um, how do we let folks in the underrepresented communities uh, know about the opportunities that they don't even know exist? And so we have to be really, really uh, intentional about getting into these communities, going to them, and not expecting them to come to us or search for that information because that's doing them a disservice. And being in Highline, um, and also being a former AP or assistant principal at Raysbeck Aviation High School, uh, one of the great things I got to see when I was at aviation was having equity and excellence in the same institution, equity and excellence in the same building. And so being able to utilize the lottery system, being able to still have high expectations and expecting the best from students because we want the best for them, um, I saw that at aviation high school. I'm pretty confident in myself having that mentorship from not only Dr. Susan Enfield, but also uh, Therese Tipton, who's the current principal at Aviation High School, mentoring me that we will have that same, if not a better level of an institution at Maritime High School. Tremaine, that was a great, uh, great response. I'm, unfortunately, we're out of time for more questions. Let's well, give them a hand. <laughs> Tremaine, thanks for sharing this important message with us. I've been looking forward to this presentation since I read the recent article on the topic in the Seattle Times uh, Sunday Magazine. We appreciate your, uh, your being with us today. We uh, uh, wish all the best for you and your wife as you tend to health concerns there. Uh, in recognition of your generosity of time with uh, Seattle 4 Rotary, we've contributed to Harvest Against Hunger, a Rotary District 5030 project, as well as a nonprofit which provides healthy meal components to regional food banks. 600 servings of fresh produce have been given in your name. 